(laughs) (laughs) What privacy that we're used to in Web 2. Um, So this is the problem. When people look at the way the internet uh, exists now, and we talk about sort of the Web 1.0, where people were initially connecting through dial-up modems um, to, to sites that people created themselves. Uh, They were decentralized. You were connecting to someone's system, someone's server at a university or in a garage. Uh, And then we got this web 2.0 gold rush to commercialize the internet, to exchange a creative and cooperative space for a commercial and competitive space, one that was centralized uh, around silos uh, run by giant corporations that gave the appearance of ownership uh, without the fact of ownership. And this is, you go to Facebook, you're right. You're like, uh, visit my Facebook page, but it's not your Facebook page. It's Facebook's Facebook page uh, that they let you change. And then they extract value from it. Um, They extract uh, activity records from you and your life and your interactions with other people. And then they use that however they want because they own it, not you. Um, and they've used that at scale again and again and again, not simply beyond you or against you, but against everyone, everywhere, all the time. And so they have increased their power while decreasing individual power um, and even collective power relative to them. Uh, and it's it's not just Facebook. It's not just one company. It's the model. Um, so Web3, in theory, is supposed to be a re decentralization, uh, I would think, of pursuing that uh, original spirit of the internet, but trying to abstract the complexity that came from having to try to homestead on the internet, uh, where you don't necessarily have to know how to run your own server. Uh, but how do we do that? How do we reestablish ownership uh, and, and all of these things? How do we uh, sort of establish identity? and a uh, kind of property uh, when you don't even, you know, touch the server, you don't know where the server is located. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, where there's a question of the distance between uh, what th- Web3 is uh, and what we hope it will be. But right now, Web3 doesn't really solve a lot of the privacy problems um, that I see largely uh because everything is still tied to hard identifiers uh, that are known, they're constant. Um, when you look at things like Ethereum and the uh, sort of entire ERC-20 economy, uh, people are going to claim these namespaces, uh, which are then you know tied to their economic identities, they're tied uh, to their interactive identities on, on these networks. Um, And it's great for functionality. They can do these new things and interact in these new ways, but they're not necessarily doing it privately. Uh, And this has always been centrally the big flaw of Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is a wonderful system uh, that everybody thinks of as like anonymous money, but it's actually anything but that. Um, It's really pseudonymous money. Uh, There is an address here that holds, you know, your money that you use for paying these, uh, this and that and the other. Um, But if you buy something from a company and then say, you know, I want this shipped to my house, well, now there's a link between your identity and your house uh, and that that's not broken out. Um, More private systems that we are moving toward that uh, my hope for Zcash and other privacy currencies, Monero is a uh, prominent competitor, um, is that uh, eventually we'll abstract from this idea uh, that when a company or a service or a platform or whatever uh, receives a payment, that they even need to know who the payment is from or or where it came from. Uh, Really, it should be more like just somebody, you know, uh, going into a gas station and handing over a token. Uh, And as long as you know that token has value, uh, you don't really care who it is. Like, they don't have to show ID to buy a bottle of water. Uh, and, And that's the way it should be. Increasingly, the world is moving towards a series of gates that separate us from everything that we want to do. And we have to sort of submit ourselves to these processes to establish uh, to the gatekeeper's satisfaction uh, that we can be permitted to pass through these gates. But that's actually the opposite of a free society. It may be 
a very well regulated society. People may like that. They may not. They may be comfortable with that. Uh, but it is not free. Uh, on the contrary, the other side is: what if we uh, could cooperate? What if we could interact? What if we could exchange uh, from anywhere to anywhere at any time? Uh, without it being, uh, without our identities being relevant, uh, we can then separate entirely from the chain of economic uh, activity any form of prejudice. Because if you don't know who someone is, uh, you can't act against them on the basis of who they are. Uh, there are a lot of people who have concerns about this on on one side and the other, um, but. When we remove identity from the economic equation, uh, we are creating, if nothing else, a more fair platform. Uh, everybody is judged the same because you can no longer discriminate on the basis of identity.